We started the Seder with Kaddish, with reciting the prayer of Kiddush, which means sanctification. And we explained that the very beginning of the Seder, we want to establish something, that we are holy. That when God took us out of Egypt, he sanctified us, even though we were not ready, even though we were not necessarily so pure and clean. But we have to know that God says to us, you are holy. But sometimes that could go to a person's head, and a person will say, I'm holy, I'm perfect, I don't have to do anything. The next step is urchatz. If you want to go through the process of liberation, after you know your essential holiness, you have to then do the second step of urchatz, washing your hands. Now, the simple reason why we wash our hands right after the Kiddush is because the next item of the Seder, karpas, involves taking a vegetable and dipping it in salt water. Now, there is an opinion, although it's not necessarily the accepted opinion, but there is an opinion that whenever we eat any type of food that is moist, we have to wash our hands the same way we wash for bread. So we normally don't do that. Most people don't. But on the night of Passover, we do things differently. That's one of the traditions of the Seder. We do things differently. The reason given is because we want to pique the curiosity of the children that they should start asking questions. So this is one of the things we do differently. But there's a deeper understanding of that. Doing things differently means that we cannot just be content with conventions of society, conventions even within Judaism. We have to constantly seek ways of breaking out of that mold. We, this is a, a revolution that is happening at the night of Passover. And whenever there are people who are involved in a revolutionary mode, you have to really check to see that it's not motivated by an enhanced ego. And Passover, the message of Passover, when we don't eat chametz, flour and water that wasn't guarded, that is allowed to rise, which symbolizes an inflated ego, that's the very message of Passover. So we have to make sure that we don't have an ego, or it's not driven by our ego, but instead is driven by desire to break out of our comfort zone, which comes from our ego. That's the ultimate reason why we try to do things differently. And indeed, the next step is going to be karpas. We're going to take a vegetable. Most Many people use a onion, a potato, a piece of cucumber. It could be any vegetable other than the bitter herb vegetables, which are reserved for the seder later on. And we dip it in salt water. And what is the reason we do that? The reason given is because we normally don't do that, so we do something differently so the children should ask questions. The idea of children asking questions is the idea that we can't be content with just doing things the way they are. We have to constantly challenge ourselves and reach into a part of our soul that transcends convention, transcends limitation. Now, we take the vegetable and we dip it in salt water. The whole concept of dipping is symbolic of getting rid of the ego as well. Because when you dip, and actually in Hebrew, the word for dipping, tibul, if you rearrange the letters, it reads bitul, nullification. And the very act of dipping one thing in another substance is where you're nullifying the original taste of the thing that you're dipping, and it becomes absorbed by something that has a different taste. So you're nullifying its original shape and, and color and taste so that's the idea at the night of Passover, that yes, we're going to revolt, we're going to rebel, we're going to break out of limitations, we're going to arouse the part of us that is not content with mediocrity, with normalcy, but we're not going to do it because we are motivated by our egos. On the contrary, we're motivated by breaking away from our egos. Now, we're told that Kadesh sanctifying the day, urchats and washing, they're connected 
by the letter Vav, the conjunctive, the letter Vav, which means and. Why are those two together, sanctifying and cleansing? One reason one can give is that if a person feels that they are holy and they leave it at that and they feel so complacent, I'm holy, why do I have to do anything? Then that could cause the person to degenerate. You can't separate the Kadesh, the sanctification, from the next step, which is the Urchatz, the washing. The Rebbe, in his commentary on the Haggadah, gives a mystical, Kabbalistic explanation. Kadesh represents the attribute of Chachma, of wisdom. Urchatz represents the attribute of Bina, understanding. The Zohar says those are two friends that never separate. One way of understanding that is that Chachma is where you receive the, the concept, the idea, but it hasn't been fleshed out, it hasn't been elucidated. You don't really have the analytical aspect of it until you get to Bina. Bina is where you build a whole system analyzing every detail. You can't go one without the other. If you have the idea, but it's not fleshed out, it won't have an impact. If it's fleshed out and analyzed, but you deviate from the central core, from the major point, then it's it's a distortion of the truth. You have to have the two together. What that means in practical terms is that we have in our soul the part of us that is receptive to the message. That's the Chachma part of us. That's the Kadesh. But then we have to make sure that it permeates our whole being. So we go from the sanctification to washing, and then we go to karpas, the vegetable that we dip, which is the process of nullification. And it's interesting that the word karpas numerically adds up to 360, which is the same as the biblical phrase, kimayim layam mechasim, as the waters cover the sea. That's in reference to the final redemption, when the knowledge of God will fill the earth like the water covers the sea. In other words, will be submerged, completely nullified, which is the idea of the dipping of the vegetable, in this divine knowledge. We get a taste of that when we dip the vegetable on the holiday of Passover at the Seder.